this is about using the surfing capability that comes with our yachts to make fast, comfortable passages, reducing weather risks in the process. Most of the video that we're going to show you is in rougher than normal conditions so that you can see what this form of high-speed voyaging should be like. We will discuss weather tactics, design factors, helming, and throttle techniques. And we are going to show you that surfing is way more fun. Holy shit! <laughs> that was the coolest thing ever! 21. 22. Yeah! Although we've been showing you some pretty gnarly sea states, we need to keep in mind that most of the time, our boat speed is used to keep us in benign conditions, and that it also allows us to visit destinations that others rarely get to see. Let's take a look at surfing now in what used to be called flying fish weather. You don't mind rounding the boat up with, you know, lots of wind because it becomes so controllable that, you know, if the boat, if you want to round it up and catch a wave and bring it back down, you just kind of, you know, throw the hell over a little bit, and down she comes, and, you know, we're kicking along at 13 knots. There's 13A, 14. Look, Ma, no hands. <laughs> hey, when I'm going 14 knots in my old boat, I can ham it. Ah, that's great! I'm glad you're recording this so I can remember it. On the trip that follows, we're going to use surfing to ride one midwinter high pressure system all the way to French Polynesia. We're going to take you with us from Auckland, New Zealand to Raivavai in the Austral Islands. It's a 2300 mile passage in early winter. We're leaving on the back of a low pressure system which should guarantee us fair winds for the first few days. The upper right hand number bouncing around is our current speed on the GPS. The large 15.0 number where it says AS, that's the speed average over the last 10 minutes. With the barometer climbing and the breeze going aft, we've set the mizzen jib and reacher. sometime this evening, eight days after we left. Forty plus years ago, we had one of those rare design moments when everything just falls into place and the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. The 38-foot catamaran Beowulf 6 was the result. Since then, we've used the same principles on every project. Sail or power. Balanced hull shape, 
moderate length to beam ratios, large, efficient rudders, forward hull sections that minimize bow steering at speed, and an F hull shaped to minimize lifting forces. We are aboard the FPB 97 Iceberg now. She's come up to Beaufort, North Carolina to have Corey McMahon at Triton Marine fine tune her steering systems, stabilizers, and get everything working smoothly together after she was repowered with a pair of 450 horsepower John Deere diesels. Running at 1800 to 2000 RPM. She is comfortably surfing along at 15 plus knots. Tracking beautifully with very little motion in these 6 to 10 foot seas generated by the 25 to 35 knots of breeze we have on the stern. Pete and Deb Rosin's FPB 64 Iron Lady. She's on her maiden passage from New Zealand up to Tonga. And as you can see, she's got a nice southeasterly breeze behind her. Even though cameras usually make the waves look smaller than they are in reality, you can get a feel for what things were like with this video. All of the FBBs exhibit similar characteristics when running at high speed surfing like this. The faster you go, the smoother the ride. What I've got here is the forward-looking camera with the bow flood on. The forward-looking camera does have a little bit of infrared capability. Still running at 1600 RPM or a little over. Uh, Steve actually saw, there you go, 15.3. Steve, Steve actually saw 19.2 knots for a brief second on one of the bigger sets, which 9 to 12 watch. All right, for all you unbelievers, there you saw it, 15.6. Let's join the FBB 83 Windhorse. So we are on our way to Panama non-stop should be about 12 days total and we're having a lovely downhill run wind horse loves these conditions and so do we We are back aboard Iceberg in New Zealand. It is blowing a gale, pissing down rain as the Kiwis like to say. And we're just surfing along. So rather than standing out here in the rain, let's check Iceberg out in her matrix deck. In these videos of Iceberg in New Zealand, she is powered with her original 300 horsepower John Deere diesels. Running off like this with the wind and sea behind her, Iceberg is super efficient, quiet, and comfortable. The excitement comes when you catch a good wave and the speed starts to build. We are aboard Cochise now, off the coast of Newfoundland, heading for Maine, with a hurricane coming up from the south. We've got a uh, nice swell behind us and a beam sea coming from uh, all the excitement down south. Watch the total fuel burn, 13 gallons an hour shown there while we're surfing. We're going to jump ahead a few hours to the south part of the Bay of Fundy. The breeze is squared around behind us, picked up a little bit. We've increased the engine RPM to 2100. We're locked into the waves now. Let's go back to the future. Welcome aboard Windhorse. We are a day out of New Zealand, headed for Fiji. 
It's blowing a fresh gale, just what we want to test the boat on our first ocean passage. The breeze is a steady 35 knots, gusting higher in the squalls. Cameras always shrink the waves, but we have a couple of photos here which may give you a better feel for size than the video. The seas are averaging 15 to 20 feet, with occasional bigger sets rolling by. As the front has recently passed through, these are from stern and bow quarters. The next day, and the breeze is back to about 150 degrees, a broad reach in sailing terms, and we are seeing top speeds on the waves of 18 knots. Our third day at sea, and the southeast trade winds are blowing. The breeze is down, and waves are almost square to our stern, and we are still surfing. Let's go back aboard Cochise now for one of the best days of surfing we've ever had. After 70 some yachts and several hundred thousand miles of R&D, all came together in the FPB 78 Cochise. While the hull was optimized for going upwind, this displacement type hull form is clearly happy surfing at twice hull speed. We've been trying to give you a feel for the capability of these yachts, hence the emphasis on stronger winds and big seas. The conditions you are watching now, with a steep primary sea from a rapidly rising wind and an iron-bound shore reflecting waves in a variety of directions, is as chaotic and difficult to steer in as we have seen. We are often asked how do we know when to back off, go slower, heave to or jog into the seas. That's easy. Going slower is rarely helpful for us. Rudders, stabilizers, and dynamic stability are proportional to boat speed squared. Going fast is generally smoother. Going slow is the opposite. If you are aboard one of our yachts, and it is not performing as you've been seeing in this video. Be sure your underwater surfaces are clean, paying particular attention to the props on FPBs. Next is the autopilot. Counter rudder is rarely needed and applied only in the smallest doses. Too much will cause oversteering. Trim should be neutral to stern down, never bow down. If all this sounds like too much bother, keep in mind that the combination of modern weather forecasting, routing software, and a boat speed of 10 knots or more opens up a whole new world for making faster, more comfortable, and safer passages. All of which is a means to an end.
we saved the best for last.